Hey what's up guys, it's Darius, and this is the Huawei P8, 6 months after its release. Huawei is known for focusing on the design, and the P8 is no exception. It is a very good and elegant looking device, however you can clearly see where it got its inspiration from. But that's not really a bad thing. Some people actually came up to me and asked me if it was an iPhone. It comes in grey, black or in gold, and even in dual SIM options. The body is very slim, even slimmer than the iPhone or the S6, and while it looks nice, with such a thin device, battery life is naturally a concern, but more about that later. It feels very solid and the chamfered edges provide some grip, but due to that flat back and again it being so thin, it's not super comfortable to hold and even a little slippery. The cool to the touch feel that comes with metal unibodies is nice, but it scratches fairly easily and it probably will get scuffs all over it if you drop it. Taking a look around the phone, the headphone jack is on the top, the charging port and the speaker on the bottom. It's not a stereo speaker, the other grill is really just there for aesthetics. It's a good speaker, but sadly you can almost mute it when you cover it, and that happened to me often when holding it in landscape orientation. On the right side, there's a SIM and micro SD card slot, which is great that it has one. The buttons are a little small, but clicky, and the power button has a nice texture around it. What I do like is that the camera is not protruding, like with other very slim devices. The 5.2 inch IPS display looks very nice, and while it's only 1080p, I didn't really miss Quad HD. It's even one of the best 1080p screens out there. It's bright, viewing angles are good, and the colors were pretty accurate. It was a little on the warmer side, but you can adjust that in the settings if you like. The only thing that I didn't like was that there's a small gap between the bezels and the display, but that's really just nitpicking. Performance was good with the Kirin 930 chip, the Mali T628 GPU, and 3GB of RAM. There was the occasional lag, and it didn't fully run as smoothly as for example the S6, but it wasn't an issue, and it still performed very well. One problem that I did have was that under load, it did tend to get hot, or at least warm. Software-wise, it runs Android 5.0 with a motion UI on top of it. There are no lollipop design elements, and everything is Apple's, uh, I mean, Huawei's creation. Yeah, it's really similar to iOS. There's no app drawer, the multitasking mode looks weird, and there's even spotlight search. Also the camera and the lock screen look very similar to the iPhones. I personally don't like it, but it's not all bad. It's very customizable with themes, or an adjustable home screen grid size for example, and many other customizable things, which is nice. The UI runs smoothly, and Huawei even added a couple of their own animations, which look nice, and it also comes with a lot of features like some gestures or knuckle sense, which I couldn't get to work on my device for some reason. Maybe that's my fault, I'm not sure. And there's also double tap to wake, which is great. You can also double press the volume down button when the screen is off to quickly take a picture, which is a good feature, but you can't focus or look at it first. I mean, the feature is there if you need it. One thing that I really liked were the notifications. They popped up discreetly, and not for too long for them to get distracting, like the standard lollipop notifications which are bold and stay there for like 10 seconds. Sadly, there's some weird problems like when Spotify is playing music, it doesn't show up on the lock screen, which I hate because I only listen to music on Spotify. There's also some bloatware installed which mostly can be uninstalled, but I mean, why does it have to come pre-installed with Dragon Mania for example? Sure, if you don't like the UI, you can always install a launcher, but that can't fix everything. Overall, the software really is the P8's biggest weakness, but that's not too bad because hardware can't be changed, but software can just be updated. The camera actually impressed me. It's a 13 megapixel f2.0 shooter with OIS, and the world's first 4 color RGBW sensor in a smartphone, which basically should allow for better performance and limited light conditions. The camera is pretty good and simple, but again reminds me of the iPhones. You can swipe through the different modes, it has some light filters, and the settings are on the other side. The camera was very quick and focused pretty accurately. Pictures look very good with great detail and sharpness, and colors are slightly saturated, but accurate. Dynamic range was good, but it tends to overexpose a little bit. With a lot of light, it performs very well, but at lower light conditions, it's only decent. The improved OS definitely helps, but in low light it definitely wasn't very good and it was hit or miss. There's a very cool light painting mode and also a time lapse mode, which both work very well. What was a disappointment was that it only shoots 1080p video. I mean, it still looks good, but it really should have 4K. And if you're into selfies, the 8 megapixel front facing camera is good. 
Overall, it's a great camera that can't completely compare to the S6's or the G4's camera, for example, but it's definitely one of the best in its price class. Honestly, with such a thin device, I expected the battery life to be bad. However, I was a little surprised. It lasted me through a full day with normal usage, with a little battery left, and with heavy usage, it didn't last me a full day, but I never had it die on me. I got an average of 4 hours of screen on time, which is decent. Sadly, even though it has a small built-in 2600mAh battery, it takes quite long to charge and there's also no wireless charging. Overall, it's a very premium looking and feeling device with a great display, good performance and a great camera, but the battery life is only decent and the software is not great and looks and feels nothing like Android and is way more like iOS. I would almost say this is an iPhone running Android. The design and OS is very similar to an iPhone, but it still comes with the customization of Android and even expandable storage. So for people that like iPhones and look for a more iOS-like experience, this is a great alternative. For me personally, the OS is a downside. It's not all bad, but it's the thing I dislike the most about it. Actually, this running stock Android would be quite an awesome device. Now even after 6 months, I'd say this is still a good phone, but while they have been updates, the software still isn't great. So about pricing and availability, that's where it gets weird. Here in Germany, it currently costs around 400 euros, and in the UK, around 350 pounds. But in the US, it's 600 dollars, which I don't understand. So if you're in the US, I wouldn't recommend getting one because there are better phones for 600 dollars, but in Europe, for example, it's a good buy. If you want to buy one, I'll have a link down below in the description. Thank you guys for watching, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please drop me a like down below, comment if you have any feedback, and don't forget to subscribe. See you guys in the next one. Bye.